Big Nose and Twinkle Toes is about two Elvis fans that meet at an Elvis convention and they get married as part of a mass wedding and they've only known each other five days. And I play Agnes who marries Leslie and comes up to this remote area in Scotland to live with him. Right, um, my character Leslie um, was a combination of uh, a Scottish person and an American person. Um, character being, uh, thinks, also thinks he's Elvis, um, trying to re uh, recreate him being Elvis when he was Elvis, and try to do the American accent, which he's really bad at. Uh, fairly early on in the film, you, you find out that, that Agnes has got her heart set on this fur coat that her husband's bought at the Elvis convention. And um, she's lost her suitcase, so you don't actually really see her identity because she has to wear her, Leslie's mother's old clothes. So you don't really see what her identity is, where she comes from. And it's when her suitcase turns up that that's when you, you, you find out the real Agnes. Um, but uh, it's a combination um, of trying to find this character, um, knowing people and just trying to think, well, okay, where is he from? What's his background like? And it's probably taken me a good six to eight months to actually find that because the first character was just it was rubbish. It was just, couldn't find him at all. Who we are? Where do we come from? And if they can't hear us, we'll sing about what we do! Set so high and low to find this person. Um, second time, tried to find someone who um, Maybe was trying to be a bit more feminine and stuff like that, but um, just didn't work. Uh, so the character Leslie has been hiding behind me for about two years now. I got my character Agnes from a girl that I met last year. Really nice person, great facial expressions and a fantastic cartoon character like voice. She was also the sort of person, she actually came across really quite dumb. She wasn't, everything she said was funny, she was an unconscious comedian. The idea came from, it was about a year ago, eh, me and Duncan were, came up with this idea about making a film with one person in it. You are nothing but a bastard. Um, and we did test screens, we had a few ideas and we did test screens for it. and. It was it just developed through that, um, and then we felt one person it was going to be too long, too drawn out, it was too difficult for us, so we ended up having the two of us in it. The, the story kind of originated from quite a few corners of our life, if you want. Um, first one was uh, my, my grand and grandfather met and married within two weeks of meeting each other, and they lived in... Oh, happily, I don't know if they lived happily. Um, I'm sure they lived happily ever after, but they lived, lived with each other for the rest of their natural lives until they died. The film's called Big Nose and Twinkle Toes because we're really, in a way, just having a laugh at ourselves and our own features. As you can see, I've got quite a sharp featured nose with a bend in it. And, uh, like, family members would always make comments about it and stuff like that, and sometimes dump themselves. Uh, I like my nose. I do. I really like my nose. Myself, and my brother, have got webbed feet, uh, or webbed toes. Sorry, on both feet. And when we were younger, we when you go to, you go to PE and stuff like that. So people in your class would notice. Go, oh, and one guy noticed one day. He said, oh, look at your feet. Ooh. Now I thought nothing of it because that's I've had these feet all my life. You know what I mean. Um, so I think nothing of it, but he's like, oh, look at your feet, oh, twinkle toes, twinkle toes. So twinkle toes was the name that he gave myself and my brother. Um, although he had a big head, so we call him Big Head. What we've just done is, one of us, if one of us is in front of the camera, the other one will obviously do the camera and the sound. And if it requires a two shot, the two of us in the shot, then we'll just set up the camera, jump in, and then afterwards check, rewind the tape and watch it back. Car coming. <laughs> And let's try and make the film with the minimalist, uh, not effort, minimalist, minimalist of people. So we decided to also do the camera, the sound, and be in front of the camera at the same time, which is a, it's a chore, it's a, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to do. And probably so far it's taken us from August right up until November, so that's, what, nearly seven or eight months? <laughs> I'm not very good at maths, OK, three months. We wanted to kind of make the, the characters um, 
the backdrop for it being a kind of isolated area. There was like um, no bu busy towns or shops and things like that. And we've also in the, the, the film we've actually done away with like the television aspect of it. So in a way it's like they're cut off, cut off from everyone else. It's difficult if the two of us have got to be on in the scene and there's no, no one operating the camera. Well, there is. We, we set the scene up beforehand. We, sh we set our, our focal points. We set our marks. So if we um, don't have our marks, we can check it back, watch it, say, OK, that didn't work, let's do it again. But some of the difficult shots have been when we've been actually shooting on the middle of a road. But up here, there's a lot of country roads and there's not much traffic, thankfully. And now, there's no chance you can set a camera up in the middle of Glasgow on a road. Cause there's no, it, one, it'd probably be stolen anyway, and two, it'd probably get run over. Um, but the fact being is, up here, really, you can do as much as you want and not be annoyed. We've been doing all, all our own stuff, like shooting, obviously, recording our sound, and then we've been going home and editing as well. We've been taking it turn about and editing. We've also been making our own music. Um, and it's not that we don't want to use other people's music, but we just can't pay. We can't pay anybody. And, and even, like, it was a challenge as well because when... With, with other films, when we've been asking people to, to act in the films, um, you're depending on their time. We thought if we put music of Elvis in the film, people will then will come along to watch the film for the music rather than the content of the film. So it, by not putting the music in, it takes away the whole thing of people coming to see Lisa to watch it because it's about Elvis. And it's more about two characters who believe and are fans of Elvis. We don't script, we don't totally script it, but we really make a detailed outline of what each scene is going to be. And we, each night we sit down and we really, really, well, we, we work it out in advance, but like before we go to go, before we go and shoot, we sit down and we totally analyse it. And in a way we do actually script it because that's when we come up with our lines. But at the same time, there's a real energy when you actually come on, come to your location and you do know what you're going to say, you don't over rehearse it, you don't rehearse it at all because then you lose all that energy. You just go in there and you, you get in there and that's where you come, you come up with quite a lot of the energetic scenes. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I've got a favourite scene, I, I like everything that's in the film so far. Um, the least favourite scene I'd probably say is the stuff that we shot beforehand. There's test footage because it didn't work. That's why we haven't got it, and that's why we've moved on to another process. If you want another draft of the film, although we came, although we brainstormed and like wrote, drew out storyboards at the beginning, really they all go up in the air because when you end up coming to your location, you don't really know what you're going to be doing until you get there. And there's so many different factors that can change things about as well, like the wind or too much traffic or too people walking to and fro. Um, but once you get there, you know what you know as a filmmaker. You know what shots, what shots to get, what shots come next. And I mean, there's, we don't, we just know in our heads what we're what we're doing. Hello. Hello. Come, sweet home. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Thank you. So I think um, the filmmaking process should be, not experimental, you should have a plan, but you should also be able to cut corners, try things out, be different, be creative. The day that we actually started filming, well the night before anyway, I was sitting, we were sitting right now at our schedule, and I always write down the date, and it was 16th of August. And the next day we went to shoot, it was the 16th of August, and that was the day that Elvis died. And it was quite weird, because you... <laughs> <laughs> Imagination, but it was almost like an omen, a good one. We've had shouting and screaming and slagging matches, but I mean, it's all part of the fun. <laughs>